and amen. To God be the glory. This is the day that the Lord has made that we may rejoice in it and be glad for this day that he has given us. We are excited for this is one of the most exciting, exciting day in a, in a, in a church calendar and also one of the most important days in the church calendar and into mankind. The Bible says he is reason. The tomb is empty. Amen? That the tomb is empty. There's no one in the tomb anymore. That's why this Sunday, it is a Resurrection Sunday. And when we talk about Resurrection Sunday, we know exactly what happened. He died, and on the third day, he rose again. So grace and peace to you, beloved brothers and sisters here in this auditorium and those watching us in your comfort of your houses, in your YouTube, in YouTube and every other gadget that you might be using. And we thank God and I pray that you may rejoice with us here in this very day that the Lord has given us. God has gifted us with a, this amazing, amazing privilege of worshiping him in his word. And may we come before him um, with reverence. Let's just understand that he is God. As we tremble at his holy word, being in his holy presence. Praise the Lord. The scriptures which you're going to share today as we celebrate the resurrected Christ, resurrected Jesus, the empty tomb, is derived from the book of Mark chapter 16 from the first verse to the 13th. That's the place we are going to uh, turn our Bibles and we read and we are going to read together. Praise the Lord. Amen. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and Salome brought spice, uh, spices so that they might come to, to and anoint him. Verse 2 says, very early on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb when the sun had risen. They, they were saying to one another, who brought away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? Looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away, although it was extremely large. Entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting at the right, wearing a white robe, and they were amazed. And he said to them, do not be amazed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazarene, Jesus the Nazarene, who has been crucified. He has risen. He is not here. Behold, he is the place where he is the place where he laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. They went out and fled from the tomb for trembling and astonishment and gripped them. Gripped them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Now, after he had risen early in the first day of the week, he first appeared to Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out seven demons. She went and re reported to those who had been with him. While they were mourning and weeping, when they were mourning and weeping, when they, were, when they heard that he was alive and 
and had been seen by her, they refused to believe. After that, he appeared in a different form to two of them while they were walking along on the way to the country. They went away and reported it to others, but they did not believe them either. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come before your presence this day, O oh God. Thank you for giving us an opportunity today for such a time as this, that we will be the recipient of this very great day, the resurrection day, that we will hear your word. Father, we are here to receive it. Father, we thank you even for us who are here in this auditorium, and thank you for those who are listening to us in the comfort of their houses. Lord, let the sweet Holy Spirit take cover and take control over this place right now. We give of ourselves as I decrease and you increase, Father, Lord God, visit us once again. We thank you and we bless you, for we pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. The resurrection of Jesus Christ. We are looking at the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Christ has risen. Christ has left his estate of humiliation. And with the resurrection, he has entered into the estate of exaltation. The same way, death has no power over you, over me, over us. Because Jesus has rendered powerless to death. That means the Bible says death has no sting over us anymore. Why? Because that humiliation, that estate of humiliation, Jesus went through. Now he is in the estate of exaltation. And he is exalted. The main desire to understand the larger truth of Christ's resurrection. Maybe we're going to share more about this resurrection in the future as we continue to seek to understand more about the resurrected Jesus. But today particularly, I would like us to understand and have resurrection account so that we may understand the importance of he has been crucified and then he has risen. He is alive, this Jesus. Jesus who pulled the cross up to Golgotha. Jesus who was given the thorn, the crown of thorn. This Jesus whom they pierce on his side. This Jesus whom actually they fought upon his garment. This Jesus whom actually they spit on. This very Jesus, whom actually they even borrowed him on a borrowed tomb. This is the Jesus we're going to talk about. Because even in the book, in the Old Testament, the Bible says in Psalms chapter 71 verse 20, it says this, it has also a witness of this Jesus. You who have shown me great and severe troubles, shall revive me again and bring me up again from the depths of the earth. This Jesus we are going to talk about. I want us to see how resurrection of our Lord Jesus, our Savior, the understanding of what is this? What does it mean to us? And the subject of our, 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 our summons today is 
the effect of the resurrected Jesus to mankind. The effect of the resurrected Jesus to mankind. Christ from the dead informs us and encourages us in this valley of tears. Because you and I, we heard, or we are, and we've been in the valley of tears. In this present evil age in which we travel in our pilgrim journey of our, uh, in our way home. We are walking in this place. Remember our previous uh, 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 series, we talked about the things that we look at and the most important thing about Christianity. And we saw that Christianity is all about waiting. Remember that? We talked about Christianity, it's about waiting. It's all about waiting, waiting, and waiting for what? Waiting for the second coming of our Lord Jesus, waiting for him to come and reveal himself to us, waiting for that day. It is us who keep waiting. Now, in that place of waiting, remember we talked about it, just recapping what we said, just connecting to what we're talking about today, that this place of waiting is not the easiest place. Why? Because you are surrounded with a cloud of spectators. And you have to keep on waiting. And in the place of waiting, it's not a place of idleness. The place of waiting is a place where you got to be connected. And the only way you can be connected, it is in prayer. Now, in the place of waiting, is a place of prayer. And in the place of prayer, it's a place of patience, the place of faith. So in this place, you have to understand that Jesus, now he is resurrected. He is no longer on the tomb. He is not dead anymore. He is a resurrected Jesus. And that's why we want to be encouraged. For us who are in the valley of tears, in this very present, present evil age, in which we travel in our pilgrim journey in our way home. We who live in the valley of shadow of death need not to fear death. You didn't hear that. I say we who travel in our pilgrim journey in our way home, we who live in the valley of the shadow of death we need not to fear death. Psalms 23, verse 1 and 4. Psalms 23, verse 1 and 4. Hallelujah. It says, In the Lord my shepherd I shall not want. He makes me lie down in the green pasture. He leads me beside all still waters. He restores my soul. 23. It's, he restores... He, he makes me lie down in the green pasture. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his, his name's sake. Verse 4 says, Ye though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod, your staff may comfort me. You are not walking alone. Now, the fear of death, remember the Bible says that death has no sting on us. Now, the word again here is strengthened by coming to understand that though you walk through that very valley of shadow of death, you will fear no evil, for you are with me. When you are with him, though you pass through the valley of shadow of death, Remember what you gave us, the story you gave us. What happened when you are walking through that valley of shadow of death in your accident? The Lord was with you. God was not alone. God had not forsaken you. He was busy working for you. He said he will not leave you. 
He said, he leads you, me, beside the still water. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Though you will walk through that, though you say that every time there's so many diseases that come along your way, though you walk through that shadow, valley of shadow of death, you will not fear because you are going through stuff in your body. You will not fear because there are things that are happening in your life. Why? Because he said, he will be with you, for he is with you. Your rod and your staff may comfort you. He will comfort you in the place that it is unbearable. Where it is not bearable, he will be with you. Where it is not even easy to stand, he will be with you. And you will find yourself and people will say, oh my God, I don't understand how this sister makes it. I don't understand how she has been able to come out of that. I don't understand how she does things. It's because they don't understand that you are, though you walk in that which they see, which they experience, they understand they know where you're coming from and they know where you're going through going to and they have no idea they have no connection they have not been given the comprehension they have not been given the understanding to know exactly how my sister you go through the things that you go through and yet you can you can be able to give them a smile they have no understanding as to how you are able to maneuver the things you maneuver yet you uh, you can afford to smile you can afford to tell them come over to my house and have some tea. You can afford to tell them, oh my brother, I want to give some help to you. What did you say you need? Then they think you are the person who needs most. Because there is a sacred secret. There's something that is hidden in this place. There is something that is hidden. When you understand that though you go through the valley of shadow of death, you are not fearing the evil. You are not fearing the things that everybody else is fearing. That's why faith is not taught, is caught. I cannot teach you faith, but you got to catch faith. I will tell you what all about in Hebrews 11, but it is upon you to catch it. It is upon you to go with it and run with it and start putting, practicing in it. But I, because I, it is so personal. Faith, it's a personal thing. It is you to run with it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, we who live in the valley of shadow of death, we will fear no evil. Our Christ has died. Our Christ has risen. We shall die in Christ. We shall rise with Christ. That's what happens. Pastor Jeff, when he baptized people here in this uh, little thing here, he tells them, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You die with Christ, you rise with Christ. Is that true, Pastor? That's what it is. You die in Christ and then you rise again with Christ. That's what it is. We shall die in Christ. We shall rise in Christ. He is the resurrection and life now. This is the mystery. This is the mystery. Those who believe in Jesus, they have to understand that though they will die, then they will resurrect because Jesus is the resurrection. Now, you don't die and then you are finished. You're done. It's over. No. Why? Because Jesus rose again. And he is the resurrection. And then it makes it and he is life. <laughs> Though you die, you live again. Because that's the Bible. He says, though you die, you live again. Why? We shall die, you shall die in Christ. We shall rise in Christ. He is our resurrection and life. Those who believe in him, even when we die, we shall live. Oh, beloved, do you really believe this? Do you really believe this? Do you really believe this? Amen. Hallelujah. 
I know that you do. Fear of death. John 11, chapter 11. John chapter 11, verse 11. Hallelujah. John chapter 11, in the 11th verse, I read a couple. These things, these things he said, and after he said of them, our friend, our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I got that I may wake him up. Then his disciples said, Lord, if sleeps, if he sleeps, he will get well. However, Jesus spoke of his death, but they thought he was speaking about taking rest in sleep. Then Jesus said to him, to them plainly, Lazarus is dead, and I am glad for your sakes that I was not there, that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go to him. Then Thomas, who is called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go and we may die with him. Verse 17, it says, So when Jesus came, he found that he had already been in the tomb four days. Now, Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles away. And, and many of the Jews had joined the woman around Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Now, Mary... As soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went to meet him, and Mary was sitting at the house. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you have been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Jesus said to her, Martha said to, her, to him, I know that we'll rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are Christ, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. Verse 28, he says, And when she had said these things, she went her way and secretly called Mary, her sister, saying, The teacher has come and say and is calling ye for you. Soon, as soon as she heard this, she arose quickly and came to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into town, but was in the place where Martha met him. Then the Jews who were with him in the house and comforting her, when they saw that Mary rose up quickly and went out, followed her, saying, She is going to the tomb to weep, her, to weep there. And where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down on his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you have been here, my brother will not have died. Therefore Jesus saw her weeping, and Jews came to her in weep, with weeping. He groaned in the spirit and was troubled. And he said, 
where have you laid him? They say to him, Lord, come, see. Jesus wept, the shortest verse. Jesus wept. Then Jews said, see how he loved him. And some of them said, could not this man who opened the eyes of blind, who have, been, who have kept this man from dying, would have kept this man from dying? Verse 38, he says, Then Jesus again, groaning in himself, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and the stone laid against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Mother, the sister who of whom was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there is a stench. For he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was laying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you. For you have heard me, and I know that you always hear me. But because of the people who are standing by, I say this, that they may believe you, that you send me. Now, when he had said these things, he cried out, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he who had died came out bound around hands and foot with, with grave cloth, and his face was wrapped with cloth. Jesus said to them, Lose him and let him go. The, the many, then many of the Jews who had come to Mary and who had seen these things, did believe in him. But some of them went away to the Pharisees and told them the things Jesus did. Then the chief priest and the Pharisees gathered a council and said, What shall we do? For this man works many signs. If we let him alone, like this, everyone will believe in him, and the Romans will come and take away both our place and nation. And one of them, uh, Caiaphas, being the high priest that year, said to them, You know nothing at all, nor do you consider that it is expedient for us that one man shall die, for the people and not the whole nation shall perish. Now this he did not say to his, on his own authority. But being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus will die for the nation. And not for the nation only, but also that he will gather together one in one, the children of God who were scattered abroad. Then from that day, they plotted to put him to death. Therefore, Jesus no longer walked openly among Jews, but, but went from there into the country near the wilderness to a city called Ephraim. And there main, uh, remained with his disciples. And the Passover of the Jews was near. And many went from the country up to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves. Then they saw Jesus and spoke among themselves as stood in the temple. What do you think? That he will not come to the feast. Now both the chief priests and the Pharisees had given a command that if anyone knew where he was, 
he should report it that they might seize him. I thought we should read that chapter to understand exactly what is happening and what's going on now when Jesus is risen and fear is not our portion. Fear of death is not our portion. Physical death cannot separate us from the love of God in Christ. Physical death cannot separate us from eternal life in Christ. God is God of living and, the, and, and not the God of the dead because Christ defeated death and the grave. Mark chapter 12, verse 18 and 27. Mark chapter 12. This is what it says in the 18th verse. Hallelujah. The same Sadducees who say there is no resurrection came to him and they asked him saying, Teacher, Moses wrote to us that if a man's brother dies and leaves his wife behind they leave, they, they, and leaves no children, his brother shall take his wife and raise uh, uh, and raise up offspring for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first took the wife and, di and dying and left no offspring. And the second took her and died. No, uh, uh, did he leave an offspring. And the third likewise. So the seven and her and left no offspring. Last of all, woman died also. Therefore, is no, there, is, there is, therefore, in the resurrection, when they rise, whose wife will she be? For all seven had her as wife. Jesus answered and said to them, listen to this, are you not therefore mistaken? Because you, are, you do not know the scriptures, nor the power of God. For when they rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. But concerning the dead, they, that they raise, they rise have you not read in the book of Moses, in the burning bush passage, how God spoke to him saying, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. You are therefore greatly mistaken. Hallelujah. Christ rose victoriously on the third day in the fulfillment of the Holy Scripture, as it is recorded in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 from verse 1 and 6. The sin debt has been paid. His resurrection proves beyond the shadow of doubt. Jesus is the Christ, the vanquisher of the death. He gave the, the giver of life and remove the curse, the bringer of ever blessing. That is our Jesus. That's why today when we read all the portion of the scripture, it is to tell us that there's come a time when we become Magdalene. When we are being told, Jesus said, he will rise again. We give, give, we give, other stories and say, I understand he will rise again. And then you, you refer it to later. While the resurrection himself is the one who was talking to Magdalene, Mary. That I am the resurrection. He will rise. That's why she had the understanding when he said that if you have been here, my brother would not have died. But then she is swayed again in unbelief. 
Not knowing that Jesus is talking to us today that he is the resurrection. I don't know what is this that has died in your life. But I want to remind you that Jesus is no longer in the tomb. No matter what is this that has died in your life. Whether it is the relationship that is dying in your life. Jesus is the resurrection. He will resurrect that which is dead. Because he is God who is a God of living, not a God of death. Because he is the, the one who who instituted marriage. He is the, the creator of marriage. He will resurrect that marriage because he is God. He will bring that which has died and bring it to life because he is God. He says, I am the resurrection. I know about you. I understand about you. That what we say, we die with Christ and we rise with Christ. Today, I want us to stand and believe and understand that Jesus, he did not only just rise for us waiting for that very day, but we, he raised and he, we have been encouraged and been be told that he will be walking with us. Even in the valley of shadow of death, we shall fear no evil. Why? Because in that valley, when we are walking in those very hard Things we cannot even be able to tell in the age that we are living in. There are so many things that are very complicated. There are so many things that are going even to become more complicated. And us as the remnant, you as a brother, you as a sister, there is a place that you need to clean on that even though you walk through the valley of shadow of death, you shall not fear the things that are coming. You shall not fear the technology that is coming. Oh, they say we are entering into the age of crypto or into the age of, 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 uh, of electronic that we will not use the fiat. Fiat is the money we have. The dollar, the, 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 the pound, the shilling, the quatch, whatever. We will no longer use that. There are so many things that are being spoken. In the next 10 years, we have no idea what is going to happen. In the next 20 years, we have no idea where we will be. We are trying to face out gas. We want to use electricity. We are trying to face out money. No more, no more cutting uh, debit cards or credit cards. You only need to carry what? Just understanding what you need to do. You need a cord. If it is that cord, you will have it in your, in your, in your wrist or you'll have it anyway. We have no idea. Things are changing. The world is changing. But even in that moment, in that valley, in that confusion, in that technology, we will not fear nothing because we know who is walking with us in that place. As long as you believe, that's why he's asking, do you believe me? Do you believe me? Do you believe me as Jesus? Do you believe what Jesus is saying? He's saying, do not fret, do not fear, do not be moved by the things that are coming around you. You only need to focus on Jesus. You only need to listen to Jesus. You only need to hear him and he will take you because he say he will walk with you. He will stand with you. He will listen to the things that you're asking him. He will come to your rescue because he never lies. He does not say he will do what not to do. He does not say that he is ready to take you to your next level, that he doesn't do it. He will make sure that he fulfills his word. Praise the Lord. Jesus, he is our resurrection. The sin, the debt has been paid. His resurrection proves beyond the shadow of doubt. Jesus is Christ. We say that he's the vanquisher of the death, and he gives us life. He's the remover of the curse. He's the bringer of the ever-blessing. When they said they, they had carried out all what was written concerning him, they took him down from the cross and laid him into the tomb. But God raised him from the dead. And when... He rose from the dead. It is recorded he appeared almost 70 or 40 to 70 times. And his resurrection brings us to the place of victory. 
His resurrection brings us to the place of victory. So the big portion of question that we ask us today, what effect did the resurrection of Jesus Christ have in your life? Has there been effect of his resurrection in your life? One of the things is that he rose again that I may be a victorious over death. Death has no power over me anymore. And Jesus is the resurrected Christ. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your grace and mercy. We thank you for your love. We thank you for the many things that you already given us. Thank you, Father, because you sent your only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And yes, today we celebrate the resurrected Christ. Lord, you're no longer under the cross because we are victorious, because death has been defeated. Lord, we are here again to say what a time that Christ has opened for us. That my Father, we conquered death. And that big promise that he has given us, because as much as we live under the sun, we will walk through this shadow of death. But we will fear no death because he will be with us in it and he will rescue us from it and we will see the goodness of God. We thank you, Father, for this day. Even for those who are watching us at the comfort of their homes right now, I know you have asked, what is this that the Lord has for me? Yes, he has everything because he is resurrected. He has all for you because he has redeemed us. Our God has redeemed us through the blood that was shed on the cross 2,000 years ago. Yes, he died and rose again for you and I to receive our victory. We thank you for that victory that we were given from the cross. We give up ourselves into your hands, O Lord, in totality. Have your way, Lord, for we pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you. Pacific Waves Waves TV.